All of a sudden, the riot police started shooting. I can still see it now. The men in front of us being shot down. I described the methods used to kill them, strangulation mainly. They were knocked unconscious and thrown into the river. Maurice Papon knew very well the mindset of the police on that day. For these crimes to be committed, the only thing he had to do was let it happen. Hello and welcome to France in Focus. I'm Haxi Myers-Belkin. We're at Saint-Michel in central Paris, just a stone's throw from the Notre Dame Cathedral. It's an iconic spot, but it's also here that six decades ago, some 200 Algerians were murdered by French police. At the height of the Algerian War of Independence, thousands of people, many of them Algerians living on the outskirts of Paris, descended on the capital to demand an end to French colonial rule in Algeria. The state response was brutal, and for many years those responsible were protected by the French authorities. A closer look now at the terrible events of the 17th of October, 1961. Early October 1961, in the midst of the Algerian War of Independence, Maurice Papon, chief of police for Paris and its surrounding suburbs, announces a new curfew for those designated at the time as French Muslims of Algeria. His justification, a wave of bombings against French police carried out by the armed wing of Algeria's National Liberation Front. To protest the curfew, the NFL called out men, women and children for a peaceful protest in Paris on October 17th. Despite police efforts to lock down the city, an estimated 20 to 40,000 people answered the call. They were met by 7,000 regular officers and 1,400 riot police. Security forces opened fire on protesters, bludgeoned them, and even threw some into the Seine. It started with a raid. In just a few hours, the authorities claimed to have arrested 11,500 people who were parked at the Coubertin Stadium and at the sports centre at Porte de Versailles. À la porte de Versailles ou le stade de Coubertin. Se produisent dès ce moment-là des violences extrêmes. This time, extreme violence occurred. In particular, it was a custom that some police officers who were in sort of a reception committee would beat up arrested Algerians. Voilà. And then, in Paris, there were murders. Se produit, se produisent des meurtres. Some 12,000 people were arrested in total. 15,000 would be deported to Algeria the next day. For weeks, unidentified bodies were pulled from the Seine. The official death toll was initially listed at just three. Historians believe the true count may be as high as 200. The following year, in March 1962, Algeria won its independence. But for decades afterwards, France continued to deny that what happened here was a massacre, while books and articles denouncing the horror of that day were censored. It wasn't until 1998 that a court ruled on the guilt of the French state. We may never know how many Franco-Algerians were murdered in Paris on the night of October 17, 1961. Dozens of bodies were found in the Seine River, but many of the files documenting their deaths were reportedly destroyed. Police prefect Maurice Papon said two protesters were killed and not by police. That was the story printed in French newspapers. Yet many had witnessed the killings. Pictures showed the bodies and blood, but authorities censored the press. Many newspapers refused. France News told me, your pictures are amazing, but we can't print that. Our paper would be seized. I told them, that's what a newspaper should do. The French section of the Algerian National Liberation Front printed a magazine denouncing the killings. And one or two French newspapers mentioned the massacre with some police officers coming forward. But authorities convinced others that whatever happened came in a context, the war in Algeria and what they called Algerian terrorism. This, although the protesters were unarmed. In the 80s, Paris, 
In the 1980s, Maurice Papon gave the same old version of events. He said the Algerian National Liberation Front was a terrorist group and that the state had to be defended. They claimed the protesters were armed. That's what they said on the night of October 17. These files were archived in the Paris courthouse. They list the victims pulled out of the river. The letters NL mean no one was investigated in these murders. The only historians allowed to access the archives were the ones backing the official version. So in the late 1990s, historian Jean-Luc Enaudi accused Papon of ordering the massacre. Maurice Papon knew very well the mindset of the police on that day. He knew there was a desire for revenge, and he let it happen. For these crimes to be committed, the only thing he had to do was let it happen. When Papon sued him for libel, Jean-Luc Enaudi was able to prove in court the massacre was real. Since the historian had no access to the documents, he asked the archivists to testify for him. I described the methods used to kill them, strangulation mainly. They were knocked unconscious and thrown into the river. Some were thrown while conscious. Those who tried to swim away were shot at. Many horrible things. After the trial, the archivists were sanctioned for testifying. But the reality of the massacre was recognized at last. But of course, for those present at the demonstration, the court ruling only confirmed what they knew to be true. Monique Elvo was one of the thousands of people in the French capital that day. She's now 92 years old. She spoke to France 24's Karim Yayaoui about her memories. Le 17 au soir, euh, il y avait des hommes à la sortie qui arrêtaient tous les hommes qui sortaient du bidonville pour vérifier qu'ils n'aient pas même un canif sur eux. Et à ce moment-là, on est parti. Au rond-point des bergères, on a vu arriver tous ceux qui venaient des banlieues d'à côté, dans un silence impressionnant. La seule chose, moi, que j'ai entendu, c'était « Algérie à nous ». C'était le slogan. Il n'y en avait pas d'autres. C'était le silence. Les, les femmes et les enfants, par groupe, étaient mélangés aux hommes. Et en seul coup, les CRS ont tiré. Et moi, je vois encore les hommes du premier rang tombés. À ce moment-là, les femmes sont parties sur le côté avec les enfants. Et alors là, on a... les femmes ont rasé les murs pour retourner euh, sur le bidonville à Nanterre parce qu'elles avaient peur euh, qu'on tire des immeubles. Au petit matin, on a vu arriver euh, des hommes complètement, euh, complètement esquintés, d'autres hommes en portant, certains qui ne pouvaient plus ni marcher ni rien du tout. C'est là qu'on a compris et qu'on a réalisé ce qui s'était passé. Il y a euh, des hommes, j'ai vu, euh, euh, qui, qui, au fond, ne, ne s'en remettront jamais de cette date du 17 octobre, non seulement physiquement, mais au fond, il y a eu là euh, euh, quelque chose de très de très puissant 
pour euh, tous les Algériens et les Algériennes qui étaient alors là bien décidés à, à la reconquête de leur pays. That brings us to the end of this edition of France in Focus. We'll leave you with images of this mural commemorating the victims of the 17th of October 1961. Thank you very much for watching.